Hi, it's Aaron. Today I'm going to show you the Evolution Simulator. It was created by Gary Wong and um, I uh, made some additions of my own to it. Um, it's an evolution simulator of a uh, two-dimensional world in which creatures live. Creatures are made of circles and sticks or nodes and muscles and they move around first randomly but then through well selection, not natural selection, but uh, automatic selection, um, they improve over time. And uh, the goal for the creatures is to move to the right as fast as possible. There are some obstacles in the world. And so hopefully that will lead to some interesting structures uh, arising uh, without any human input. It's just the, the computer chewing on numbers and uh, some uh, pseudo randomness. Um, the simulator, as uh, it was published on uh, openprocessing.org, uh, it was uh, it looks very interesting, but has some limitations in the sense that um, almost always the simulation would result in a very simple triangular creature of three nodes and three muscles that would uh, always well be the fastest to go to the to move to the right. Um, so I added some things. I added um, a minimum amount of nodes. So you see here, all the creatures have six nodes at least, and at least eight muscles. And um, I also uh, added some randomization for the obstacles that the creatures arise. So in this simulation, every single generation has had different uh, obstacles. Because also what you would see in if you would have uh, obstacles that would contain a simple stairway, um, like uh, one step uh, and the next step exactly as high, exactly as far, um, the creatures that would arise would be uh, optimized entirely for this specific height and the specific distance of the stairs. So I figured it would be interesting to see uh, if you would have different obstacles every time, what would result. Um, so. Let's see. Um, well, as you see, this is the, the, the chart over time. Um, the black line is uh, uh, basically shows how far the fastest creatures have come. And even in many, many generations, that doesn't change a lot. So the, the optimum is achieved pretty soon. And over time, it doesn't change a lot. Um, I'll show you the, the best uh, creature of the, the latest generation. Um, the fitness is 1.6, so it didn't come very far, and that probably is because the obstacles were pretty hard to go around. Yeah, there you see it. Uh, a big wall arises, so uh, even though it's uh, probably a pretty successful climber, it doesn't manage to get over this high obstacle. But if we go uh, a couple of generations back, there's a high amount of variation in every uh, generation, how far they got. Here the best creature got to 4.6 meters, and let's uh, let's watch how this creature climbs over all the obstacles. Um, the basic structure of the creatures, uh, the successful ones, um, is very similar over time. What you see is this big red ball. Uh, they all have a very big node uh, relative to the front of the creature. Um, then two pumping smaller nodes to the back and to the front and some medium nodes in the middle and as you see this creature is pretty successful in climbing uh, relatively high obstacles and it manages to uh, to climb this high stairway and then uh, basically uh, run onward um, what's interesting is that this this basic uh, structure as you recognize it um, it changes continuously because no no single generation is is exactly the same um, but it returns over all the generations because if we go back now you see this this creature is pretty successful to uh, to get to the end the simulation only looks at the first 15 seconds in the life of the creature so after that, this is not uh, not relevant for its fitness. But if we could scroll back in time to uh, one of the, the earliest generations that uh, also gets uh, almost as far, let's have a look at that. 
How far does it get? Now it's 2.4. Let's get a generation that gets a bit further. Yeah, 3.46. Let's see how this uh, creature does it. Well, as you see, it's it's almost the same. It's not as um, optimized as the, the creature that we just saw, but the basic structure is again the same. Big uh, node in the middle, uh, pumping node to the back, pumping node to the front. And already uh, at that point, it manages to, to climb this pretty high obstacle and uh, get away from it. So uh, even though I let the simulator run for many generations, um, this is basically the, the best it gets because there's, there's a lot of variation. And uh, if you look through, um, uh, through the generations, there's some, some patterns. For example, there was a, a period, I think it was here, where suddenly they would have more uh, white nodes. And white nodes are nodes with less, uh, less friction. But, um, yeah, let's see that white one. But even um, through all these changes, uh, the maximum uh, distance that they would manage and the basic structure of the how they would move forward didn't really change. Well, it's hard to uh, select later generations if you have so many, but... I'll just select one of these then. Yeah, let's have a look at this one. Yeah, once again, very similar way of moving, very similar structure of the of the creature. Uh, another thing that's interesting to, see, interesting to see is the red line in the chart. That's the median of the the fitness or the distance that the creatures manage to go. The median stays pretty low and pretty constant. So the best creatures manage to get to four, five, six meters. But uh, the median or the average, the, they don't get further than about one meter. So to say differently, most creatures are pretty unsuccessful in every generation. So even though there are successful ones at the top, the next generation, they mutate so much that uh, they don't really take uh, the whole field to a higher level of, uh, of fitness. And I guess that's part of the characteristics of how the evolution simulator uh, does its mutations and um, of the, uh, the high amount of uh, mutations that I've uh, configured for, uh, for this particular run. Um, finally, something that's interesting because of the, the random uh, obstacles pretty often it happens that there's just a, a very difficult obstacle uh, very soon in the in the track. So uh, very often in between you get a run where um, many creatures don't don't get very far. So there's a very low median. I'm trying to select one now that has a median of uh, below one. This by the way yeah, I mean, well, the user interface is not optimal, but uh, it's it's uh, it's just a very fun uh, fun thing to play with. But here you see the median is uh, zero point six meters, so most of the creatures don't get past uh, probably even the first or the second uh, obstacle. So probably the first or the second obstacle in this uh, run was was very difficult to pass by. So let's see, this is the median. Uh, uh, creature in this run. Yeah, it doesn't look too difficult this obstacle, but uh, even this uh, this creature doesn't uh, doesn't pass it, and most don't. And again, the most successful one, it does. But then it doesn't get further uh, further ahead than this. Another thing you see the chart uh, on the top, uh, no, the bottom left. There's a distribution of uh, the different types of uh, the different basic structures of creatures. 
um, the red band is uh, S68. So that would be uh, a creature with six nodes and eight muscles that the most successful ones are almost always of this structure. And um, the other variations, they don't arise. And that's also a common pattern of um, uh, what you would see in the, the simpler co configurations of the evolution simulator. Um, it basically doesn't happen that a creature grows more complex than um, than um, the most allow the, the simplest configuration allowed. So it doesn't basically happen. Well, as you see, this this creature does happen. I managed to uh, climb uh, a very high wall, by the way. But it doesn't happen that uh, let's say creatures grow twenty nodes and thirty muscles and grow out to be some huge, uh, hugely complex beast, as you, you might uh, imagine thinking of natural uh, evolution, evolution in nature, that just doesn't happen with this um, particular 2D world and the configuration capabilities. I was kind of hoping that uh, adding the random obstacles would lead to some more uh, complex structure, which I think it, it did. Um, but uh, it still doesn't lead to hugely or even uh, more complex creatures than uh, the minimum uh, allowed. So that was that. I, uh, I hope you enjoy that.